what is up? It is Marissa Nicole here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a highly, highly, highly requested video that all of y'all have been asking about. I've kind of touched upon it in different videos from the summer, from the school year, but I haven't made an actual video on this yet. So I'm finally doing that now for y'all. I and mean, it's basically what the cash envelope system is, how I use it, and how it helps me budget and save money in college, but also you can do it outside of college. To start out, I'm gonna let you know of all the things that you might need to get started with this cash envelope system. And of course, you're gonna need envelopes. The first time I ever did this, I used a mini accordion file. Um, I got it from the Dollar Tree, literally, so that's also another way that you can use it. You're gonna need some pens, markers, some, something to write on because you're gonna have to start writing and making lists and label the envelopes, etc. You're of course going to need cash. It's a cash envelope system, so you need envelopes and you need cash. You might need a calculator. Your phone will obviously work or just a mini calculator is fine. Something that way when we start budgeting and we start figuring out how much money we're going to need every month or per paycheck or how many your bills are, everything like that, you're gonna need a calculator to add all that up. What's gonna make this super helpful but also super productive and efficient and actually doing what you want it to do, you're gonna need some past bank statements or your bank history. You can also just use like your app. So I'm able to log on and see and just scroll through everything that I bought and how much I bought it for. You can do that or log on to it online, whatever you wanna do, but you need to be able to look at your past expenses and how you've spent Money. You're also gonna need stuff that you regularly spend money on, things that you have to, for example, bills. So if you have normal bills every month, like your phone bill is $50 every month, then you're gonna need those. You're just gonna at least need that number or a statement or something, write it down somewhere so you remember that. But also if you have bills that fluctuate, kind of like electricity, water, kind of get those statements or jot down those amounts that you've spent in those areas. That way we can get a roundabout estimate of how much money you're spending in those areas. That way later on, we're actually just gonna kind of average that out. And that's pretty much it that you're gonna need to actually start it and implement it. So there's about 10 steps that I'm gonna walk you through on how to get this started and how kind of to use it. Step one, you're going to want to total all of your monthly bills and that's going to be the bills that you know for sure are. So that's like your insurance, your phone bill, anything like that. That's a set number every month that never changes. Total that up. You're also going to want to keep track of it individually. So I suggest having different columns or just sections. So saying like phone bill is 50, insurance is 80, car insurance is 70, but then also at the end, write down the total. Just so as we get going and you look back, you can stay organized and you know where those numbers came from. Don't just kind of write down 150 because you're going to be like, where is that from? Along with the bills that stay the same every month, you're going to want to total up those bills that don't stay the same every month. This is when you're going to start averaging that out. Let's work with your gas in your car. Typically, you don't spend the same amount of money on gas all the time. You do other things. You go to the mall. You do fun things. You just drive. So every week, you might spend a different amount on gas. But let's say one week, you spend $20 on gas, and you spend $40 on gas, spend like $35 on gas, only $5 on gas, etc., etc. You're going to kind of find that high point and also that low point. Um, kind of meet in the middle or find that area that you know that you'll at least need to spend every time or that like you should definitely plan for. For me, I always allocate $40 for my gas. Sometimes I spend less. Sometimes I might need to spend a little bit more. Typically I don't. That's those on rare occasions. Yours might be different. Yours might be the same. And you're going to do this with all the other bills, including your electric and your gas and anything like that. You're going to kind of ballpark it and say, typically my electricity is $80 a month. Now, sometimes it goes over, but that might also be an incentive for you to turn off those lights and really save on that electricity because now your budget is only $60, which means your electricity can only be at least $60. That can help in that area. But also as we get more into it, I'll explain to you how you can use money that's not allocated for that specific subject. We'll get more in depth into that. But step one is to total up your bills that stay the same and total up your bills that aren't don't stay the same and come up with a ballpark. Step two, you're going to want to start writing down categories of like what you spend money on. This is when your bank statements come into play and you're going to look through all those bank statements and see what you mainly spend your money on and kind of start to categorize that. So you don't want to be like, oh, I spend my money at Shell and then I spend it at BP and then I spend it at 7-Eleven. No, just going to say gas. Now that you have the categories built, you're going to start pulling and dragging your bank statements and those prices into those categories. Now, I recommend going back at least three months. That's a good gauge on how much you're going to be spending. I mean, I break it down per month. So three months ago, you're going to have a block for that month and you're going to throw everything that you ever spent for shopping into that little area. And then everything you ever spent on restaurants or food into that area and everything you spent on leisurely activities or miscellaneous into this area. And then do that for two months ago in this month. Once you have a total of what you spent for those three individual months, again, I, I like to keep it broken down so you see where those numbers are coming from. So I might have a 200 from three months ago, a 100 from two months ago, but then 150 this month. I want to see those individual numbers, but I'm also going to total it out on the bottom and see how much I spent total in that area for the past three months. Now this part is tricky, but this is when I go back on my big statements as well and figure out how much I usually get paid. If you get paid a salary, then you're fine. But if you get paid like hourly or something like that and it, it fluctuates, you're going to have to kind of determine how much you typically get paid or what you can always bank on getting. For example, if you get paid sometimes 200, 220, 240, 280, 180, something like that, I would probably estimate your checks to be 200. 
200. You at least always make 200. Yes, of course, sometimes you make them more, which is great. Every now and again, you might make less, and that might be because it's a holiday and the offices were closed or something, but you always make at least 200. You can bank on that every paycheck, every month, whatever it is. So that's gonna be your price point. Number five is when you take those price points that you just made for each paycheck or each month, and you're gonna determine how much you're gonna want to spend in those categories. So before we totaled it up, now you're gonna go through and decide how much you want to spend. So let's say within the last three months, on average, I spent at least $60 on food. And that's like restaurants or fast food, not like groceries, but just like food. That's a lot, okay? I've decided that that's a lot and I don't wanna spend that much. I'm gonna allocate myself $25 per paycheck for me to spend on food. And I'm gonna do the same thing with shopping. Let's say the past three months, every month, I've usually spent around $20, $25 on shopping every paycheck. No, that seems okay with me. I'm probably gonna keep that. Now let's go to leisurely activities. So like going to the movies, going to the bars, getting alcohol, or getting Ubers, anything like that. If you look back at that and you're spending around 80 to 100 every paycheck on that, you're gonna need to budget and you're gonna need to figure out if that's okay for you, if you can afford that, perfect. But if you can't and you're starting to realize how much you're spending on those things, then you need to make a change. So at this point, you're gonna break it all down. You're also going to decide when these refills happen because basically how much you're spending with this, this allocating that you're, you're deciding on right now is per refill. And by refill, I mean how many times are you going to refill those envelopes? Are you going to do it bi-weekly because you get paid bi-weekly? Are you going to do it every week because you get paid every week? Are you going to do it once a month with just your first paycheck because that may be bigger? When do you get paid and when do you want to refill your envelopes? I do it bi-weekly because I get paid bi-weekly. So when I talk about $40, that's what I spend every two weeks. But you can decide your refill periods on your own depending on how you get paid. The sixth step is to grab your accordion file or those envelopes and start labeling them for each of those categories that we came up with earlier. So your shopping, your restaurants, your groceries, your gas, your utilities, anything like that, you're gonna start labeling all those envelopes and you should have one per category. Step number seven, the next time you get paid, you're gonna go to the bank and withdraw cash. And not just any amount of cash, you're gonna withdraw the amount of cash that you allocated per paycheck. So in step four, when we decided how much you regularly make in a paycheck and how much you're banking on, that amount is what you're gonna go get on cash. So let's say you get paid 250, you allocated 200. You're gonna go to the bank and you're gonna take out 200, not the whole 250, because you don't need the whole 250. You're only gonna take out the 200, because when you broke down into your categories and you decided how much money you're gonna be spending on gas and food and fashion and all these other categories, it should add up to 200. You shouldn't go over your estimated paycheck, because then you're in debt. You don't wanna be in debt. <laughs> you want to stay within your budget. So all of those categories should add up to 200 at least. Of course you can go under, and then if that's the case, then you're only gonna take out that much. But that's why I want you to decide your paycheck amount first, the 200, then go into your categories, because then you know your limits, and you have to try to wiggle around and figure out how all of your different categories are gonna add up to that 200. Step eight is to take those cash and you're gonna dispense it into those envelopes per amount that you've discussed. So $40 goes into my gas, $25 goes into my restaurants, and then I'm gonna put in $60 into my utilities. You're gonna actually put that money into those envelopes. Step nine is basically how you're gonna use it. So when you're out going shopping, when you go to Kroger to go buy groceries, you're only gonna grab that grocery envelope from your desk or wherever you keep it and you're gonna put it in your purse and you're gonna go to the grocery store. If you have $40 in that grocery envelope for two weeks, you can only spend $40 in two weeks. That's your budget, like that's all you have in that category. So you're gonna have to pick and choose what you can buy at the grocery store that doesn't go over your limit. And you can only spend from that category. So if I go to Kroger and I'm just gonna spend $45, I cannot take money out of my leisurely to go spend because that defeats the purpose of budgeting. Now, of course, nobody's gonna slap you on the hand and be like, no, you can't spend from other envelopes. If you so want to, you're more than welcome to. However, you need to understand that if you're taking from another envelope, that just means you have less to spend in that envelope as well. So let's say I go to Kroger and I want to spend $60 on groceries. So I take an extra $20 out of my utilities one because I have extra money in there. So I spend it. Now bills come around and I don't have enough to pay the bills because I took money out of it to pay for groceries because I'm not budgeting well. So the key is to only spend money from the said category that you're going to be spending the money on. You have to discipline yourself and only spend $40 on groceries or only eat out worth $60 for two weeks. I can't go over. That'll stop you from going to hang out with your friends and going out to get too much food and say, I only have $60. If I want to spend it all in one big meal, fine. Or if I want to go to Little Meals, and have little hangouts for the next two weeks. As long as I can spend $60 in that two weeks, then I'm good. The last step is how you're gonna keep reusing it. So basically you have two options at the end of your pay cycle or like your next refill. So when you go to refill, you get paid again. Before you take that cash out, you can do one of two things. If you have money left over in your envelopes from the last refill, because you didn't spend it all, which is great, that is a huge good sign. If you have money left 
leftover, you can do two things with it. One, you can leave it in the envelopes and then still put money into it so you have a little bit extra. So let's say you have $5 left over in your leisurely and then I'm gonna put another 25 in there. Now I have 30. So it means these two weeks I can spend $30 on leisure. Perfect, I can have more fun. Or you can take whatever's left in all of those envelopes and put it into your savings. And I highly suggest doing that. That is how to build your savings. That's why the cash envelope system is good for budgeting, but if you use it correctly, you can also do it for saving. Even how I mentioned before, let's say you always make at least 240, but you banked on 200 as being like your overall bi-weekly budget. That extra $40 should also go straight into your savings because you're not gonna use it anyways. You've only budgeted with 200. You got paid extra, so you have a surplus of money. Put that into your savings. Then at the end of the next paycheck, you still have $20 left over out of all of your categories. Put that in the savings. Now look what you just did. You have $60 in your savings. My suggestion to you is always go with Route 2. However, if something's coming up, like you know someone's birthday's coming up or you know Christmas is coming up, of course you're gonna need to spend that money. So if you have extra left over, you're more welcome to use it. Don't feel bad that you use it. Just think about priorities and think about what you need to do. Are you using this system to help budget or are you using this system to help save? You can do both with it. Just depends on how you're gonna use it. That's the essence of the cash envelope system. I hope I explained it well enough. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know down below and I'll be happy to reiterate or re-explain. You can also just Google what the cash envelope system is. There's definitely more in-depth explanations and probably easier to follow explanations if I didn't do well enough for you. I'm just hoping to give you the way that I use the cash envelope system, how I use it to budget in college and how I save money in college. This is what I use. It's always worked for me and a lot of people have always asked me about it. So I wanted to make a video on it. So I hope it was helpful. Let me know if you start using it. I want to know if it works for you. I want to know if you're excited to use it. I want to know if it, you understood what I was saying. Of course, the whole point of my channel is to help you conquer college. And this is something that helps you conquer, you know, expenses in college, which can be really hectic. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.